<laughs> yes, it's a good job nobody gives a rat's ass who actually wins the thing, isn't it? <laughs> In fact, the most gripping part is usually trying to second-guess the blatant tactical and political voting that's become something of a Eurovision trademark. For example, Greece could arrive on stage and just bang a coal scuttle with a stick for three minutes and still be guaranteed 12 points from Cyprus. <laughs> uh, similarly, the chances of Turkey receiving any votes from Greece are somewhere between remote and negligible. <laughs> and our good friends in Germany seem firmly convinced each year that the UK would find anything more than four points simply embarrassing. <laughs> uh, we, on the other hand, remain completely fair and liberal-minded, as always, even giving the odd vote to the filthy Hun. <laughs> Though when one considers the uh, general standard of their contributions down through the ages, you might wonder that they get any from anyone. Guido hat euch lieb, und wenn's auch beim Tränen gibt, kommt er rüber und singt für euch nieder. Guido hat euch lieb. Just a small selection of the peculiar interpretations Germany has put upon the word song over the years. <laughs> uh, dominated by the bizarre stage antics of one Gildo Horn. Uh, although looking at his hair, we've at least solved the mystery of where the middle of this man's moustache went. <laughs> Uh, some people might generously describe this distressing performance as ironic, uh, but we're assured Gildo was, as people say in the German pop world, simply going for it. Uh, sadly, having gone for it, he appears to have missed it by several miles. <laughs> Indeed, one wonders just what he would have done with it had he actually caught up with it. <laughs> and what of the impromptu bell ringing session? The most unlikely instrumentation ever to grace a Eurovision stage? Well, sadly, no. Not if you count this. Obviously, bell ringing, hose playing, and whatever we classify this as. Let's say, man attempting to blow own liver out through watering can. <laughs> uh, all these are merely cheap stunts, attempting to distract attention from the general thinness of material, or in Gildo Horn's case, hair. Uh, proper songs don't require such crass theatrics, and in Eurovision, what counts as proper songs come in three distinct varieties. There's the clever linguistic wordplay. <laughs> Secondly, there's the nicely understated lullaby. <laughs> and then there are the songs with a message, and the message is get another lyricist. Just say you had a date.
just to uh, underline the confusion inherent in that last lyric, uh, here in fact are a couple of swallows a nesting. Uh, if either of your breasts do indeed resemble such a sight, I can only urge you to seek medical attention immediately. <laughs> Uh, the audience back then, of course, unaware what a coup it was that Finland should be represented by John Denver and Wet Wet Wet's Marty Pello. <laughs> didn't look that much like them, but uh, then this didn't look that much like me. <laughs> In my opinion, but no one else's. Uh, then again, the Eurovision Song Contest has never really been about contestants. It's not even about Europe, and it's certainly not about songs. If anything, it's simply about television and tradition. Despite its high sheen, the show remains one of the few reliably shambolic amateur nights out in the modern high-tech calendar. Its very ghastliness is somehow reassuring the world has not completely been taken over by flawless digital machines and perfect human superstars. With wonky old Eurovision annually on the horizon, there's always the chance that TV history, albeit of a distinctly odd variety, may well be created right before your disbelieving eyes. <laughs> Kom hit hvor jeg er Hvor solen er nær Du må ikke gå This is Hilversum calling. Before I start giving you my points, I should like uh, to say that my heart goes to all the singers in the contest because I know what they feel. I know you, of course, have taken part, so you must be it's feeling long ago. your nerves. <laughs> A long time ago, was it? <laughs> He's very happy to be here, he says. The lovely uh, uh, Tuck, Madame Tuck. <laughs> I think that will be after the reprise. That's Dana International, of course, last year's winner. And there she was, pretending to fall and actually do it. And so, like income tax, another birthday, or an ex-set missile, there really is no avoiding it. Best then to just sit back and let it happen. It's beyond cool, beyond style, and often beyond belief. Uh, soon another gigantic slice of Euro cheese will be hurtling out of control and into a television set near you. All hail the Eurovision Song Contest. Or, as Shakespeare himself put it, if music be the food of love, la la la, ring-a-ding, bing-bong. <laughs> and who would argue with that? Good night. Good night. Bonne nuit, bonne nuit, bonne nuit, il va y avoir, good night, buenas noches, la connoche, buena note, il y va, spacoine noche, und gute nacht. Eurovision, Eurovision. With a sneak peek at this year's competition, Liquid Eurovision Preview is on BBC Choice tomorrow night at 8.30. And of course, you can catch the contest live here on BBC One and on Radio 2, Saturday night from 8.00.